Hey everybody, welcome back to whatever we want. I'm hey, Cam. I'm Sam. Did you interrupt me halfway through the thing? Are we fighting already? We're gonna take you back to high school, to your high school debate team today. Did you did your high school have a debate team? Uh we I think we did. Did yours? No. But yeah, all what we've done here, I've gotten a whole bunch of awesome hot debate topics in this here bowl. Uh, we're gonna go best of five, and we're gonna be obje as, obje as objective as possible, because these are pretty menial, stupid, nothing debates. Yeah. So, yeah. so the person who draws the argument gets to choose which side they argue for. Okay. Um, I don't have a coin or anything. Okay, I was just gonna say. Let, let, let's do rock paper scissors. Okay. Rock paper scissors. All right, I guess I go first. Oh, okay. I wanted to do two out of three. This is too fucking bad. Okay. First debate is chunky or smooth peanut butter. Okay, what side do you want to take? I'm going to argue smooth peanut butter. Okay, I'll take chunky. Because I love smooth peanut butter. So, okay, smooth peanut butter, it spreads easier. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get gunked up in your teeth mm -hmm. or mouth. I don't want to die when I'm eating it. It mixes well with other things. I'm a big fan, personally, of butter and peanut butter combo, because see what happens when you put the smooth peanut butter on top of the hot butter that's melted on your toast. It congeals into a smoother, creamier, tastier, butterier topping on your toast, right? Now, chunky peanut butter, I don't even know where you would start with something like that. You gotta get a fucking spoon to get it out of the jar, first and foremost. You ever had a PB&J with chunky peanut butter? I think I'd rather kill myself. But with smooth peanut butter, like, you can make peanut butter cookies out of that. There's no chunky peanut butter cookie recipe on the jar. No. It's like, you, you read the side of the jar, and it's like, why did you buy me? You like, got five seconds. And you know what? I just think smooth peanut butter is the best peanut butter, and that is my reason why. Okay, well, that's it. That's all for you. And begin. Okay, so here's the thing. Nobody said you can't do with chunky peanut butter what you can do with smooth peanut butter. No one said that. It's like totally allowed. If you want like, okay, <sighs> smooth peanut butter is fine. Also for what it's worth, smooth peanut butter gets gunked up in your gums and like under your mouth also. Like it does the exact same thing. It's just like peanut butter, like chunky peanut butter has the added texture of actual peanuts in the peanut butter. And like to each their own, but like that's fine. That's fine. Smooth peanut butter does the same thing. And like, as far as um, um, things that you can do with it goes, mm -hmm. no one said that you can't make like peanut butter cookies or like peanut butter mix with, with, with chunky peanut butter. Like that's allowed. That's probably fine. It's still, there's still peanut butter in the chunky peanut butter. It's just the added extra-ness of peanuts. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's allowed. Five seconds. And Really already? Okay. Well, quite frankly, I just enjoy the experience of chunky peanut butter altogether. And it's it's stop. extra. It's oomph. I'm sorry. I took that one. You didn't even make a point. You, you just say you just said that I was an idiot. <laughs> <Goodness. Okay. laughs> Careful. So can we say point for Cam? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you spent you spent your entire argument with a preamble. <laughs> That's funny. Do so like dog earring, like doing this to your books, yeah. or um, using actual bookmarks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to argue for bookmarks. Okay. You can take dog earring. Sure. You open you with this. your argument. Okay. Starting in three, two. Go. You can have fun with bookmarks. I personally love making my own bookmarks. I have a little series of my favorite drag queens started and um, they don't destroy your books that way. I like, okay. <sighs> yes, you can dog ear a book to like a page to remember like your favorite page, but there's also just, I don't know, you can make a bookmark for each individual book and like write down your favorite pages and passages from that book. There's also just, I don't know, writing things down in a journal. What's the matter with you? What if you want to loan it to somebody and then they're looking through the page and they're like, oh, I guess that's important. And then, you know what? I've borrowed books from people who dog ear their books before. And you know what? It's not that important. It's only important to you. Okay. You're, and you're not as smart as you think you are. So just use a normal book mark okay there's that like seriously get it the fuck together it's so stupid to you're basically like destroying the integrity of a book and then it's not for what point mm -hmm. what purpose does it serve no one's gonna think the same thing is, is as Five important seconds. as you will so just keep your book pages nice and flat and, and smooth stop. and good and use a bookmark that was good good argument dog hearing a book is free 
first and foremost. You're gonna have to buy materials to make a bookmark, you have to buy a bookmark yourself, and in today's economy, do we really have that kind of money to go around? I mean, you're gonna bankrupt yourself by buying all these damn bookmarks, and yeah, sure, there might be a window into the soul, but the book itself is an expression of your personality. You bought the book. Wouldn't you just wanna not spend any extra money? And plus, like you said, I'll take your point, you can mark specific pages. What if you have a favorite page, a favorite line that you want to revisit because it means that much to you, dog-earing all the way? It's also your book, and you're allowed to destroy it if you want to do that. If you want to break the spine or mess up the pages, it's your property, you bought it. So don't spend the extra money, find your extra special pages, 15 seconds, and then allow the book to get worn, because a worn book is a loved book, because you've read it so many times, you're flipping through the pages, If you can actually see pages that you've undog-eared, and be like, wow, I remember when this was my favorite page, but now this one's my favorite page, and you know? done. Like, do you not have, like, a dollar for construction paper? Like, I don't have a the job, Sam. With you? <laughs> 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 no, I won that. I'm sorry. I make bookmarks for free, like 100% mm. free with like cardboard from cereal boxes mm. and construction paper that I have lying around my house. Mm -hmm. Do you not have construction paper lying? We both live with our parents. Do you not have paper lying yeah, around? These debates have nothing to do with our opinions. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, this is all preamble to say that I won that one. Yeah, I'll give you that. Sure. Thank you. You made a, you made a better point than I did because anyone you. who's ever read a book is going to go like, destroy a book? What the fuck is wrong with you? Whoops. Oh, that's <laughs> your point. That's your point. You gotta take that no, one. No. No. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Ooh, ketchup on top of fries or ketchup to dip? Mm. This is a good one. I'm gonna argue for ketchup on top. Who have I been dating all this time? Go. So you're gonna dip every fry in the ketchup anyway, right? So you drizzle it on top and you eat it with a fork because that way you get more fries per bite and you get the tastiness of ketchup on every single bite. Versus having to dip and dip and dip and dip and refill and dip and dip and dip and refill. It's like, okay, uh, uh, tangential to this argument is like, you ever had like, uh, poutine is a good example. You get the coverness of everything you want on top of the fries, acting like a base, right? Um, well, yeah, you'd use more ketchup, but like I said, it covers everything. You get more ketchup per bite, better flavor. It's a little bit cleaner because you eat it with a fork. You know, unless you're one of those people who really don't mind your hands getting dirty, in which case this also pleases that side of the argument. If you really want to get messy with your fries, 15. you cover them with you cover them with ketchup and you get your fucking mitts in there and you mix them around. I think that covering ketchup with fries or covering fries with ketchup is just the ultimate way to do it. It's a great way to finish off your meal with a snacky, salty way to and end done. your meal. <laughs> So you're just gonna tear down my argument this whole time and lose, or you're gonna actually gonna like, prove your own point this time around? Shut up. Here we go. Three, two, one. So dipping your ketch e dipping each fry in the ketchup on the side maintains the construction of like the 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 makeup of the French fry. It keeps it good. Even the worst. Listen, you could have the gnarliest bottom of the barrel Wendy's French fry, and if you dip it in the sauce in the in the ketchup or whatever sauce you choose, you're gonna have a better time. Okay, it maintains the structure of the French fry overall and provides a better experience. Also, if you have any other seasonings on top of your fries, which is another thing I could argue, season your goddamn French fries, it gives you an experience with every single bite. You dip your fry in the ketchup and then you eat the ketchup um, front part of the French fry. And then you have the seasoned French fry with your salt or your, your barbecue seasoning or whatever. And then you get to enjoy that. You get to enjoy the French fry for what it is down to its core. It's so much better than just like drizzling a fucking mess. And you know what? I don't want to get a fork out for and a French fry. It's a French fry. It's a finger food. Done. Eat it with your fingers. Yeah, um, the the fry integrity argument is, uh, that's a good point. I actually do legitimately like eating ketchup on, like doing what I said, like yeah. I actually do like doing that. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's 100% relied on the integrity of the fries. Exactly, if you have a shitty French fry, the ketchup's gonna break it down like but, that. Socks and sandals. Mmm, so like, socks or sandals, yay for fine, nay for like, bastardized creation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm actually gonna argue pro socks and sandals. So you're gonna argue yay for socks and sandals. I am. Then I'll, then I'll argue nay. So here's the thing about socks and sandals. We have gone too long choosing the wrong combination of socks and sandals. So if you have a Birkenstock, get a nice, like, 
um, I'm not wearing one right now, but get a nice like Dickies work sock with like the red stripe on it and kind of like slouch it up a little bit. You can do anything. You can make anything fashion if you just like tweak it well enough, right? There's also um, technically um, open toed high heeled shoes are called sandals. And I see people wearing socks with those all the time. You get like the cute like frilly socks or like see through socks with like a cute pattern on it. And it can be a good time actually. It just, it just needs a little bit of styling. It All it requires is a little bit of zhuzh and a little bit of vision and I, I believe it can work it just depends on what you're wearing with it sure Ten if seconds. you wear adidas slides with neon green so uh, socks pulled up to your calf it's gonna look stupid but if you come if you look at the construction of the, of the shoe it can work stop you just have to you just have to accommodate hey, hey sh you can't argue past the clock fine go the point of sandals <laughs> is to have airflow to your feet it's an open-toed concept for a shoe. There's a reason why it's that way. Wearing socks and sandals defeats the purpose. Wear shoes! You also look like a fucking dork. You ended your point with being, yeah, but if you wear this kind of sock and sandals, you look like an idiot. That's half of socks and sandals. You just don't wear them. My mother broke up with someone because on their first date, he showed up with socks and sandals and she closed the fucking door in his face. Is that a little extreme? Sure, I could acquiesce that. But is she wrong? You're gonna sit here and tell me that she's wrong? No way! No fucking way. You are not supposed to wear socks and sandals. Ten seconds. Like, even with the Birkenstock argument. Well, yeah, sure, colors might work, but you still look like a fucking idiot. Wear boots if you want to protect your feet that badly. And you're done. I don't know, man. I, I I respect your argument. You argued a good argument, but I still contend to this day that bugger showed up to your mom's house with bad socks and sandals. I still think with styling, it can look good. What if you want to show off cool socks? But the thing is, and like, it, it's just, there's such a cultural faux pas to it. And there is, you have to admit this, there is for people who wear socks and sandals, a little bit of acknowledged cheesiness to wearing socks and sandals. Like, like hockey dudes, for instance, who wear socks and sandals to practices, they call it socks and flops. They're acknowledging that they look a little stupid. I'm sorry. Like, th there, there is a inherent cheesiness to wearing socks and sandals. What if you got ugly ass feet, but you still want to wear a sandal? <laughs> Buy shoes. <laughs> Get toe you shoes. Just, you just can't have sandals. Get toe you shoes. You just can't have sandals. Get toe shoes. Get toe shoes. And okay. then wear sandals. I'm <laughs> Could we say that we each get a point? Like half a point? No, just like one point each and keep it going. Because if you win okay. this, the video's over. Okay. Um, so I will rip this in half. Okay. So you have three points, I have two points. Okay, you have to choose so the thing this So if time. you win this ne in this next debate, you've won the video. Oh, this is a good one. Do you eat out of the bag or in a bowl? Which one do you want to argue? Well, I'll argue for the one that I'm the most familiar with, which is out of the bag. Go. When I'm getting a snack, like a bag of popcorn or a bag of chips, it's at the end of the night, I've had a long day slaving away in the stew, doing all sorts of shit. I want to treat myself. I don't want to portion out something and then have that portion and then be like, oh, but I, mm, there's a whole, I want more. It's like, treat yourself. I don't have bags of chips every day. So when the weekend rolls around and you fucking whip a bowl and you want a snack or two, just eat out of the bag, you know? And then now this is your bag. I'm a big fan, as a matter of fact, because I spend a lot of time in the basement, is to snack out of the bag, roll up the bag, and then keep it where you chill for the next time you want to come and chill. So you have like another half a bag of stuff. If you think about it, the portioning is similar. It's just, I get to eat until I'm satisfied. And then I get to roll the bag up and put it down. Versus like, if I do it in a bowl, well, how big is the bowl? If I get a big enough bowl, I'll pour the whole bag in there. And before you know it, de de defeated purpose. I may as well have just eaten it out of the bag in the first place. But if oh, you you're done. Oh, okay. I was not key. I was, I was listening to you. I was like very intently yeah, listening to you. I was about to say. Um, did I go over? How much did I go over? Just like three seconds. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you a minute five then. Okay. Just, just to, that's fair. Go. I think you will surprise yourself when you pour a snack into a bowl and then you finish that bowl, you will find that you are more done than you think that you are. So, you know, and especially um, in this day and age where we're at home a lot and we have ample opportunity to snack and snack and snack and snack and snack, it helps you like keep track 
of how much you're eating. If you have a bowl, like like give me like give me this bowl right here, the, the arguments are in. So like, you know, you can look at this bowl and you can say, do I want this many chips? Or do I want more chips? Or do I want less chips? And it helps you measure out how you're feeling about your snack in the moment. It just helps, it just, it just helps you organize your thoughts a little bit better. It's 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 better for you, honestly. And yeah, you mess up a bowl in the meantime, but who's to say you can't just like make this bowl your bowl? And then pour the next bag, the next serving of chips into this bowl. And then you just have it all the time. Ten There's seconds. nothing wrong with that. It's the same thing as keeping a bag out, you know? It's it's the same thing. Just finish your bowl of chips and let it and let it rock. Let and it rock, let it rock. And I think we both made good points there, yeah. honestly. Um yeah, it really just comes down to personal preference. It also it also comes down to like how much of a fucking pig you are and how much you like want to share or not share with people. Yeah, right? I certainly have my days where I'm just like, fuck it, give me the bag. Yeah. Just give me the bag. And if it's like a bag of crispers or like flavor yeah. bastard goldfish, yeah. like I'm not going to put that in a fucking bowl. No. Why am I going to put that in a bowl? No, no it's too small. We're talking smart food. We're talking Lay's or Ruffles, Cheetos whatever. Or Cheetos or Cheetos, totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, 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 yeah. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Because yeah. I'll be honest, I really feel like, you know, what we, you know what we needed for this video? An adjudicator. We needed, yeah. <laughs> big time. We, we needed a big fucking, time, big time. Um, well, hang on. We're How just many, trying to be as like, as like neutral as possible. Yeah. We'll each give each other one more point. So I have three points and you have four points. Mm -hmm. And this is, well, if I win this next bait, debate wholly, we have to do one more. Mm -hmm. But if you win this next one wholly. That's it. That's it. Because there's literally no more debates. Yeah. Um, I pulled that one, right? Yes. So here you go. It's me. Subtitles on or off? Ooh. I'm gonna argue for on. Wow. This could be hard for me. Yeah. Call me uh call me Shangela, because I am I am uh I am stacking this game against or for myself. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so like can you read? Can you not read? You know, and 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 they're they're small and they're at the bottom. They really don't affect your ability to watch the show so much. And you get so much more information when you watch subtitles. I have, I, I think I said this on a podcast or a stream or something, but I have gained so much more insight on in the things that I watch um, by having the subtitles on because the you can see all of the lyrics to all of the music that's playing in the background when it's applicable. So you and you you can also like see what um, if you like a song that's being played in a scene the artist and the title of the song is displayed in the subtitles so you get more into the scene because you're like oh huh, I wonder why the director chose that song and it helps you understand the context of the scene so much better and if there are little Ten words seconds. if there are little words and things especially with accents that you miss you don't miss those things it just helps you understand the project so much better Three, and deepens your understanding two, and of the thing done. good argument thank you yeah that was good Okay, you ready to go? No. You see, Sam, I got tiny little baby eyes. And how am I supposed to notice the nuances of and the details of the film and blocking if I'm focusing all my time and energy on the subtitles at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, sure, you get some more insight to the script, but you miss out on the visual things. There were times where I've had to rewind things because I would read the subtitle and the characters would be reacting to something that happened silently on the screen. And... That's just not an ideal viewing experience for me, you know? Like, I want to be able to look at something and see the full picture, right? Hear the dialogue, see the colors, see the framing, see the actors in, in the scene, right? See their emotions on their face. That's another thing you miss. Because you miss out on the nuances of actors' performances. 15 seconds. Especially when it comes to live action performances. You miss out on their emotions and the, and the tiny ticks in their face and the way their eyes move, you know? Um, because you're not focused on that part of the thing you're watching. You're focused on the dialogue, you know? And you're done. I'm hard of hearing. I have to have subtitles on. I think I think I got that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I, I did better debating my side than I thought I was going to. Yeah, no. Like, the 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 nuances on the face argument was a good angle to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think with a little bit more prep time, you could have actually built a good argument for yourself. It also, it also would have helped if I didn't wholly agree with your argument. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like I said, I, I have, I, my hearing sucks. If you want to see us do something on whatever we want, leave a comment in the comment yeah. section. Yeah. So, you have an idea. We can make 
make it happen. And if you want to see me rant um, all the time, you can join in one of our Twitch streams sometimes. I literally do it for, for channel points. Or you can listen to our podcast, which uploads every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Where I also argue a lot. Yes, yes. But whatever we want uploads every Monday at 1.45. And we'll see you guys next week. Next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.